Okay, linear graphs. So we're, we're changing gears completely now. Like this is a brand new topic, has nothing to do with conversions. This is just a, a new thing, all right? So before we get into this, I wanna make sure we're all clear on, on kind of something we've already done. So remember, recall some stuff that we've looked at. Solving linear equations with one variable. We went through a set of steps on how to do this. Examples of this are like four times x plus one minus 10 equals three x plus seven. So that's an example of a linear equation with one variable. Okay, we, we should all be at least comfortable with the idea that we've done this or seen this before. We have an equation, right? It's linear because the power that we see on these X's is the first power. And so it's linear and then there's only one variable X, right? And when we did these problems, we, we were able to determine that, do y'all remember what the possible answers you could get were? There were three different ones. Can y'all rem remember what the possibilities were in terms of the solutions to a linear equation in one variable? There were three different things that could happen. No? You could just get a number like x equals some number. You just get like x equals four, something like that. You could get an, a single answer. You could get no solution. And then you could get all real numbers. Does that ring a bell? We did cover that. So the, when you're looking at a, a linear equation in one variable, you're either going to get one number as an answer, you're going to get no answer, or you're going to get every number is the correct answer. What we're going to talk about now is something completely different. We're now going to talk about linear equations with two variables. All right, and the key here, the key difference is that we have two variables. So I wanna be able to contrast this side by side. If I write x plus two equals four, and then I say versus x plus y equals four, okay? The one on the left is a linear equation in one variable. The one on the right is a linear equation in two variables. Can somebody tell me what the solution to the one on the left is? What must X be for this to be true? Two. Two, right? X is two. That's the only answer possible. Two plus two is four, you're done. But look at the one on the right. Can somebody give me an X and a Y that would make that equation true? Give me both the X and the Y that would make that true. Two. Two, two and two for both, right? Yeah. You can make X two and Y two and it would be true. Can somebody give me another X and another Y that would make both uh, this equation true? Something different than two and two. Three plus one. Three and one, right? So X could be three and Y could be one. Does everyone agree that would work? Yeah. Okay, how about this? Could X be one and Y be three? Could you switch it, like switch the one and the three? Would that still work? Yeah. Can somebody give me something crazier? Some weird numbers maybe? Maybe a negative number? Is it possible negative. to have one of those be negative? Go ahead, sorry. Negative five and one. Negative five and one, uh, I'm not sure that would work. Negative I'm sorry. Five. How, okay, I'm sorry. How about negative, let's negative stick with five. negative five. Let's stick with negative five. What would Y have to be? Negative one? Well, no, um, nine. Nine. 
Why would it have to be nine? Why would it have to be nine? Negative five plus nine, that would give you four. Okay, any others? Are there more pairs of numbers that we could find? Yeah. Yeah. How many more do you think there are? Uh, infinite. An infinite number of them. We could do this all day long. We could actually continue to come up with pairs that would work for the rest of our lives. And we would never get to the end of the list. Like you just keep going forever. So when you're looking at a linear equation in two variables, you're never gonna have just one answer. You're always gonna have, well, it's gonna turn out that there's three possibilities again, but you're going to have pairs of numbers that make the equation work, but the, the number of pairs that you have is infinite. So each of these, each of these answers, okay, each of these is called an ordered pair ordered pair. Okay, each one of them is called an ordered pair. So I've given us an example right now of four different ordered pairs that work, right? But there's an infinite number. Um, let's try, let's try one more thing. Um, yeah, no, I think that's good. That's good. So the key, the key to this, the, well, the language here, at least, is I think you all understand where the word pair comes from, right? Because there's an X and a Y, so you have a pair of numbers that are part of your answer. The ordered part comes from the idea that the order actually matters. The order of the pair matters. Let me, let me look at this, this answer we got here. Uh, well, see, for this, I gave you a bad example because it actually turns out for this example, you could switch the order and it would still work no matter what, so it's not a good example. But in further examples, we'll see that the order does matter. Okay, so maybe maybe three one, maybe three one works, but if you switch it, maybe it doesn't work. In this problem it does, but in others it won't. So the order, um, your answer is always gonna be a pair of numbers that the order is important. And the way we write that, is like this. We usually write our ordered pair in parentheses. We put the x value here and the y value here. And that's what an ordered pair is. So if I were to write each of these as their ordered pair, this first one would be 2, 2. The second one would be 3, 1. This third one would be 1, 3. And then this one up here would be the ordered pair negative 5, 9. Okay, so we've got these ordered pairs very different than what we saw here with the linear equation one variable. It's not just like a single answer, two. It's all these answers. So if, if somebody gives you a linear equation and they ask you, hey, give me the answer, give me all the answers to that, that is impossible for you to do. It is absolutely impossible for you to list out all the numbers. I hope that you agree with that. It would take an infinite amount of time, which we don't have. So is there a way that we could represent these answers in a way that would help us kind of get an idea of what they look like maybe? So if you go back and you look at this answer that we had on this problem, this linear equation, one variable, x equals two. If I were to ask you to graph that on a number line, you would just say, okay, there it is. It's that dot that dot that's sitting on the x-axis, it's right there. That's the number two, that's the answer. And everyone can see that answer. Well, maybe there's a way that we can visualize all these ordered pairs, and we do. We visualize them using a two-dimensional coordinate system. And I know y'all have seen this before. We draw <clears throat> on a flat sheet of paper, we draw an x or a cross, and then we label this the x-axis. We label this the y-axis. And this right here is what we, are, what we refer to as the Cartesian plane or the rectangular coordinate system. But it's just a way for us to graphically visualize ordered pairs. So when we look at those ordered pairs we had, where were they? We had the ordered pair 2, 2, 
three one one three and then we had negative five nine we're going to try and transfer those now onto this cartesian plane now to help me so i can cheat a little bit here i'm going to make my page like a graph like graph paper i think i'm gonna go with that one and i'm even going to get i'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to cheat here by bringing in my own. Whoa. Let's go with that. There we go. All right. A little bit more I want to do here. Okay, so I, I'm going back to where we started. We started with this linear equation in two variables right here, x plus y equals four. We already said there's an infinite number of answers, but we're gonna try and visualize them on the rectangular uh, coordinate system. So let's start out with this first order pair of two, two. And remember, the x is always the first one and, and the y is always the second number. So if we say two, two, that means we're gonna go on the x-axis out two, and then simultaneously on the y-axis, we're going to go up two. And so to the right two, up two, we're going to put a dot there. And that dot represents one of the answers. Just like this one up here. But now we're looking at it in two-dimensional space. Then the next answer is 3, 1. So we go out, you know, remember the x is 3. And so I go to the right 3, and then I go up 1, and I put a dot. Okay, so that's my second point. How about this one right here, one, three? That means I go to the right one and up three. Are y'all following how I'm doing this? I know a lot of you have done this already, so we good? Last one, negative five, nine. That means I need to move to the left five, two, three, four, five, that's negative five. And then I need to go up nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm like over here. Get rid of all that crap. Right there. And do y'all do y'all um, see something about all of those answers? There's something special about them. They're not just like randomly scattered on the page. They all they all have something in common. What is it? Uh, they they all kind of run like left to right. Okay. Right down. Okay. Yes and no. Um, I mean, yes, they all run kind of left to right down, but or, well, yeah. Look, do y'all do y'all see this? Oh, they cross three. Four. Yeah, cross at three. But don't they all lie on a straight, the same straight line? Like all of those points all lie on the same line, don't they? Yes. And what that means is that any point that you can ever come up with on this line should be an answer. So let me just pick one. Let's look at this one right here. Can y'all tell me what that ordered pair is? Can you tell me what the X coordinate is or the X value? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We go to the right seven and then down how much? Three, does it look like three? Down three, y'all see that? Does that work if we plug it in to here? Does it give us an answer? Seven plus negative three, is that four? It is, right? Seven plus negative three is four. That works. In fact, every single point that you could ever find on this line works you could go check yourself so when you have a linear equation this is kind of like the point all right the whole point here is that if we have a linear equation in two variables all of the solutions to that linear equation can be visualized with a line and that, that's kind of why we call them linear equations, because they make up, they make lines, okay? 
When you draw the answers, they make lines. So our goal right now <clears throat> is for me to give you a linear equation and for you to draw me the line that represents all of the answers. So let me ask you something. How many points do you need to draw a straight line? What's the minimum number of points you need to draw a straight line? Two. Two, right? You just need two points. If you give me two distinct points, I can always draw the line between them. So the good news here is that when we go to draw linear graphs or you know, draw the, the line for a linear equation in two variables, all you have to do is find two points. Once you find two points, you're in business. You draw a line, you're done. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. And there's two different methods to do this. And I'm, there's called what's called the intercept method, and then there's another one called the, the y-intercept method, or the uh, slope-intercept method, I'm sorry. So today, we'll see how far we get with this. I'm gonna teach you the intercept method for graphing linear graphs of equations, linear equations in two variables. So I hope you recognize that every single one of these problems is a linear equation, right? So they're all linear equations, and most of them have two variables. I don't know if y'all notice that. These all have two variables, x and y, but do you see on number five and number six, there's actually one variable? Well, we'll get to that. That's kind of a special case, all right? So let's start, let's start this out. Do number one. Okay, we look at this. Y equals negative 2x plus 9. That is a linear equation in two variables. So the intercept method, what we're going to do is, this is a very simple, simple uh, procedure. What we're going to do is we're going to find, so let's, let's y'all like steps. So I'll give you steps. So if we have a linear equation, with two variables, the steps, the steps to graph the line, all right? The steps are first, make sure it's a linear equation in two variables, right? If it's a linear equation in one variable, we don't do this method. Two, we're going to find the intercepts, and I'll explain what those are in a second. Find the intercepts. And what we'll do first is we'll, we'll find what's called the x-intercept. Okay, we will find the x-intercept first. And to do that, what we do is we set, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. And then what we'll do is we'll find the y-intercept. And to do that, we will set x equal to zero <clears throat> and solve for y. So let me explain what we're doing here, all right? What we're doing is we're saying, hey, look, we know that the solution to this linear equation in two variables, we know that the answer to that should be a line. And if it's a line, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but it's gonna be a straight line. And it should hit the x-axis somewhere, right? It should, somewhere on the x-axis it should hit. That's called the x-intercept. I'm just gonna put x-int. And this right here where it hits the y-axis should be called the y-intercept. Now, can somebody tell me, for the x-intercept, the ordered pair, can you tell me what part of that ordered pair you know for sure? If it's the x-intercept, what, what of those two pieces of the ordered pair do you absolutely know? Do you know what the x-value is? The x? Yeah, well, it should be zero, right? Uh, close, not the x, the what? Oh, the y. The y value should be zero, right? Because 
the Y value tells you how much to go up and down. And if you're on the X axis, that means you're not going anywhere up and down. So for any time you're looking for the X intercept, you know that your Y value must be zero, right? On the contrary, when we're trying to look for the Y intercept, what can you tell me? If you're looking on the Y, right? If you're on the Y axis, what must your X be? Zero. Zero, right? So that is why what we're gonna do here for graphing these to find our two points is we're gonna find the X intercepts first. And to do that, we set Y to zero. Why do we set Y to zero? Because we said with the X intercept, the Y value is always zero. And then we're gonna go find the Y intercepts. And to do that, we set X equal to zero. Why? Because we said, if you're looking at a Y intercept, the X value must be zero. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Let's actually go do it now, all right? So let's work through this example. All right, so here we go. Got the equation here. Um, step one, is it a linear equation in two variables? Yes. Okay, step two, gonna find the intercepts. So let's start with the x-intercept. So when I start with the x-intercept, I'm gonna take the equation and I'm gonna set y equal to zero. So wherever I see my y, I'm gonna replace it with zero. And I'm gonna write that equation down. Zero equals negative uh, two x plus nine. Y'all see what I've done? Just replace the y with zero. Now who wants to tell me what, what type of equation that is now? What are we looking at here now? What is this? Is it an equation? Yes. Yes. Is it linear? Is the power on the, on the variable one? No. Is the power on that x a one? It is, yeah. right? It's not x squared, it's not x cubed, it's just x. How many variables do we have? Two. One. Now we only have one, right? We had two, but we replaced the y with zero. So what we're looking at now is a linear equation in one variable, which is what we did earlier, like in the previous sections. So we already have a, a set of steps for this. All we wanna do is try and isolate this X, get it by itself, right? So what would be my first step to isolate that X? How could I get that X term by itself? Subtract the nine from okay, both sides. Okay, subtract nine on both sides of the equation, good. So if I do that, I get a negative nine on the left. On the left side, the nines cancel, and I still have negative two X. Good, almost there, we just have to get X, not negative two X. So how do I get rid of the negative two? Divide by negative. Divide, right? We don't add two, we divide by negative two because we're trying to undo multiplication. And so now those negative twos will go away. You'll have the X and negative nine divided by two. Now here at this point, I don't mind if you use a calculator to, to get a decimal you should get positive 4.5. Okay, that's your x-intercept. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find the y-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? We rewrite the equation, but this time we replace the x with zero. Okay, so let's replace the x with zero. So the equation becomes y equals negative two times zero plus nine. All right, so I'm, I'm using that first equation still, but I'm leaving the y alone now, replacing the x with zero. So that should just give me y equals what? Because the negative two times zero just goes away. So nine. y equals nine, and we're done. I've solved for y, right? Y is nine. So I should be able to draw this now. I should actually be able to draw this. 
if I were to go to a new page, I'm just going to start this out fresh. If I were to be asked to graph this, we said that the X was 4.5 and we said that the Y was 9. So if I go out to the right, one, two, three, four, here's five. So um, 4.5 is about halfway. That's my X intercept. My Y intercept is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine. There's nine. Those are two points. And once I have two points, I can draw a line. So I get my little ruler out, right? Whatever you have is a ruler. And you would draw a line between those two points. And that means every point on that line would be a solution to the original equation. Okay, so the answer is actually the line because the line represents an infinite number of points, right? Every point on that line is an answer. And there's infinitely many of them. Are there any questions on that? Okay. I think I'm going to leave this next one for you. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to let you work through it right now. So I know it's hard to sit here and just listen to me for this long. I want you to work yourself. But let's see how this goes. I, I would like for everyone here to try and work this problem out the same way. I want you to make sure, you know, go through these steps, make sure it's linear equation, two variables, and then I want you to find the X and Y intercepts. And I'm gonna give you, let's say five, five minutes. Let's see where you are in five minutes on that. And if you, if you finish it, try and draw the line, okay?
Okay. <clears throat> so you should have got that answer. The x-intercept should have been negative six. The y-intercept should have been positive six. And the graph of that line is there on the left-hand side. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay. What about, let's see. Let's do number four. Number four looks a little more complicated. So number four is a linear equation in two variables. Second step, we're gonna find the x-intercept. So to do that, we set y equal to zero. And when you do that, this cancels out. So you just get 8x equals 17. And then I'll divide both sides by eight. And yes, I will be going to my calculator now. 17 divided by eight, 0.875. And now I find the y-intercept by setting x equal to zero. So eight times zero plus five y equals 17. The eight times zero cancels out. So you get five y equals 17. I divide both sides by five. And I get y equals 17 over five, which I believe is 3.2. Uh, no, 3.4. Are there any questions on that? I went through that kind of quick, but as far as the method, does everyone understand that? If I went to graph this, this would be a little challenging to graph because we have decimals. So this is, let's say one, two, three. We're trying to put on the x-axis 0.875. That's not quite one. Right, it's a little less than one. So you just kind of eyeball it, all right? That's 0.875 roughly. And then 3.4, you go up one, two, three, here's four. Maybe 3.4 is almost three and a half, so somewhere around there. And then you draw your, your straight line through those. That's not very straight, but you get the idea. Okay, sure there's no questions? All right, look at number five and number six. <clears throat> there's something very different about number five and six. What is it? Can someone identify what's different? You only have one variable? Yeah, I mean, these are linear equations, but there's only one variable, right? Well, what we need to do here is kind of change our perspective. We now are thinking about lines, lines on a flat sheet of paper, okay? So when we look at this first equation here, 5y over 2 equals 10, we're trying to come up with all the ordered pairs that would make this true. So you just, y'all tell me whether or not this would work. If I were to say, I want an ordered pair that would work here. Do you all agree that the, the ordered pair zero, four would work? So what am I replacing X with? Zero. Zero, but there is no X, right? In the equation? So that zero is kind of irrelevant. If I replace the Y with four, what would I get? What's five times four, then divide that by two? Well, five times four is 20, right? One. Divided by two, that'd be 10. That'd be true, right? That'd work. Can somebody give me another order pair that would work? That has to do with that? the five times, five times Y? Pardon? Are you asking like what, uh, it'd be like five times Y will equal what? Well, like, um, okay, so you, you see how when we replace this y with 4, it's 5 times 4, which is 20, and then divide that by 2, and you get 10, right? So th this, this one worked, right? 0, 4, you're okay with that, Anthony? 
Yes. Okay. All I'm asking is, can you think of a different ordered pair, not zero four, but any other ordered pair that would still work? And you can kind of cheat because remember that the X doesn't matter, does it? No. So couldn't you just do one four? Wouldn't that do, give you the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could I do two four? Sure. Right. Yes. I could do negative one four. I could go all day long. All I'm doing is changing my X values, right? If as long as I leave the Y as a four, it works. So what did, what would that look like on a graph? What's the same in every single one of those problems? The or four. every single one of those ordered pairs? The four, right? Your Y is always four, but your X is changing. So if I go one, two, three, here's Y is four. The first ordered pair, I'll call it point A, is that point right there. That's point A. Point B is one to the right and then up four. That's B. C is two to the right, then up four. Do you all see that all of those together would create a flat horizontal line? Do you all see that? A horizontal line. All of those, all the points on this line have something in common. What they have in common is that the Y value is four. So going back and looking at this problem, if we were to start this problem out, okay, the very beginning, if we were to sit here and go, okay, how do we, how do we solve this problem? If you're asked to actually graph this line, you'd have to realize, okay, first of all, it doesn't have two variables. It only has one. It only has Y in it. And since there's only one variable, what I could do is I could take the equation. I could multiply both sides by two. That would clear this fraction out. That would leave me five Y equals 20. Then I could divide both sides by five. And 20 divided by five is four. So I get Y equals four. And that was like the magic number, Y equals four. So now when I go, I'm acting like I don't have this. As soon as I see that Y equals four, I automatically have to remember that it's a horizontal line. Anytime you get Y equals a number, it's horizontal. So I go draw it by going to the Y value of four and just drawing a line through it. Okay, so you... You look at that, you identify it, you say this is gonna be a horizontal line because it only has Y in it. You solve for Y and then you draw your horizontal line. What do you think is gonna happen on number six? You don't have a Y there, right? You only have an it's X. So, okay. so what? For X. You're gonna solve for X. Okay, let's go ahead and solve that for X. If you did that, you divide both sides by eight. You get negative two, don't you? What do you think that looks like if you draw that? If so X is always negative two. Go ahead. I was gonna say it's a vertical line. Vertical line, exactly. So if X is negative two, that's right there. It's every point that has X equals negative two, right? Every point on this vertical line has an X value of two. The Y value really doesn't matter. I put a question mark there. The Y value is irrelevant because there is no Y in this equation. So in summary, here, here's, if I had to summarize all this to kind of try and make it make sense to you, what we have are three different cases. The first case is where you have something like 3X plus Y equals 10. In that, in that case right there, you're going to have a line that's going to do something. It's going to be slanted a little bit because it has both X and Y in the equation. Case two is where you have like, I don't know, like two Y plus one equals five, let's say. That equation only has Y in it, right? 
So automatically, what you can tell me is this, gonna, this is going to be what type of line? If it just has Y. Horizontal. Horizontal. And then case three would be if you had an equation that had just X in it. And what are you going to get when you draw, when you graph that line? You're going to get a vertical line. Okay. So that's when it comes to linear equations, when we're trying to graph them as lines on a flat sheet of paper, you have three scenarios. When you have both X and Y in the equation, you know that your line's gonna have some sort of little tilt to it. It's not gonna be vertical, it's not gonna be horizontal, it's gonna have a tilt. If it just has Y in the equation, you know it's horizontal. If it just has X in the equation, you know it's vertical. Now you still have to go through and solve, but that's the type of line you're gonna have as an answer. I hope that makes sense. Okay, what do we got? 128, we got 10 minutes. Let's look at number eight. Okay, so y'all can tell me right now, is this gonna be a vertical line? Number eight. No. No. Horizontal? No. No, okay, it has both X and Y in the equation, so we know this is gonna have some sort of tilt to it. So that means we should go try and find the intercepts. So I'm going to try and find the intercepts. Um, let's do the x-intercepts first. How do we find x-intercepts? We replace y with zero. So I put one-fourth times zero minus one-eighth x equals a half. Okay, that's every time we want to find x-intercepts, we always replace y with zero. That's never going to go away in this class. It's always going to be the case. Find x-intercepts, replace y with zero. So this is gone. So I have negative one-eighth x equals a half. Anyone have an idea of how I can do that? How can I get x by itself there? Divide uh, one. Say again? Divide uh, one-half by negative one-eighth. OK, so you want me to divide both sides by negative one-eighth? Yes? I think that's fair. Does yeah. everyone agree that could, that could be the case? On the left-hand side, you're just going to get those cancel out. You'll have your X. But on the right-hand side, be, be very careful here because what you're doing is you're doing one-half divided by negative one-eighth. That's really what we're doing, aren't we? Right? That's what that means. But how do we do division of two fractions? Who was it that had that little trick? Was it... Uh, Change. Yeah. Who came up with that? I don't think she's here. It wasn't Sarah, was it? No. No. Forgot her name. She's not, I don't see her here. Okay. So yeah, it was like um um what was it? Keep dot flip or something like that? Oh. Keep flip change. Keep, keep yeah, something like that. So Dot, you change the, the division to multiplication, and you flip it, and you do one over, or eight over negative one. Is it copy now, dot flip? Yeah, keep dot flip or something like that. So now we multiply straight across, and we should get eight over negative two, but that's just negative four. So we know the x-intercept is negative four. Okay, how do we find the y-intercept? For that, oh crap, whoa, that didn't work well. To find the y-intercept, try and do that over here to keep it all on one screen. To find the y-intercept, we replace x with zero. So one-fourth y minus one-eighth times zero equals a half. This, this negative one-eighth times zero goes away. So all you're left with is one-fourth y equals a half. Same story, you could divide both sides by one-fourth, 
I'm going to do something slightly different. Even though we could divide both sides by one fourth, I'm actually just going to multiply both sides by four over one. This is like clearing the fractions out. The fours cancel, the ones cancel, you just get y. And on the right hand side, you can just multiply straight across now. So what should the right hand side come out to be? Four over two, right? So that's just two. So our x is our x is negative four. So I go to negative four, I put a dot. Our y is positive two, so I go put a dot. And then to the best of my ability, maybe using a straight edge, your I don't know, your ID or if you have a ruler at home, whatever, you draw a straight line through those two points. And that straight line represents all of the ordered pairs that are solutions to that linear equation. Okay. So I think that's a good place for me to stop. There's, there's more that I could do. Let me take a look at the homework for this. I think you can handle, at least try, the first problems here on page 37. See how you do on page 37 and 38. I think you might have some questions on some of them, but stop at page 38, okay? So that'll be the official homework for tonight is all of that stuff from scientific notation homework and the conversions, and then also the, the linear graphs intercept methods uh, homework starting on page 37 and ending on page 38. Any questions there? Did anybody have any questions over homework from previous sections? No? Are y'all still there? I know, I know David's there. Thank you, David. You've been, you've been uh, responding. I know Anthony has. Dalton, I, I know you, you know, I appreciate the responses. It's tough to sit here and talk and not have anyone respond, but um, I do appreciate feedback when I'm going through this stuff. Yeah, I, uh, can you do on the homework, uh, page 23, number 23? So everyone else, if you're happy and you want to just bail out, you can. Um, if you have anything you want me to go over homework-wise, then um, you can hang out. Or if you have any questions that you need to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, um, we can do that also. Okay, it was page 23. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just trying to go over. I had questions, but I just can't find where they were. Where were. Okay. But that, that one's pretty pretty like represent you know pretty good representation okay all right so is there something you just pick something here and i can I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's page number three, uh, and I have a question number 23. Okay, hold on just a second. Uh, David, did you want me to do a problem off this page? I, I'm kind of. Uh, sure. uh, if you want to do hers first, I can look around and find a better one. So that one's okay. actually not that bad. Yeah, okay, so why don't you do that? Okay, so is it, how do I say your name, Sachi? Sachi, yes. Okay, Sachi. Um, let's see, you said page three? Page 23, and oh. the question number is 23 as well. Okay, 23, 23. Okay, certain animal shelter, at a certain animal shelter, the ratio of puppy, uh, puppies to adults is seven to four. Mm. Okay, so let me just, I'm gonna just draw a picture here because I like to draw pictures. So you've got like puppies, right? Mm. And for every seven puppies, you have four adults. Mm. 
adult dogs, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. They're not saying they have seven and four. It's, that's the ratio. Okay. okay. This week, there are a total of 55 dogs in the shelter. How many puppies are there and how many adult dogs? So this is tricky. All right. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. From, from the information they gave us, we could set up a proportion, couldn't we? We could write seven puppies. Can I use just P for puppy? Is that all right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Seven puppies to every four adults. That's one proportion we could set up, right? Okay. Another proportion, we could do four adults to every seven puppies, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a couple of other ratios we could set up that are not really given, but we could kind of deduce them if we think about. It. Could we also say that there are four adults for every 11 dogs? Because if the ratio is, is seven to four, uh -huh. that means you would have four adults for every 11 dogs, right? Oh, okay. Or you could also say that you would have seven puppies for every 11 dogs. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. where's, so the 11, 11, where's the 11 coming from? Seven plus four. Oh, I see, okay. okay. You okay. see, so it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky, but it is there. That information is, um, it's hidden within the, within the wording. So I could have said, you know, they could have said, hey, this, this shelter, at the shelter, there's um, four puppies for every 11 dogs, right? They could have given us that, four puppies for 11 dogs. Mm -hmm. And from that, we could have two ratios, 11 dogs over seven puppies or seven puppies over 11 dogs. That's not the way they're giving it to us. They're saying there's, there's um, seven, uh, the ratio, there's seven puppies for every, uh, to every four adults which is the same as saying there's seven puppies for every 11 dogs. So I, I, look, I like to look at it like if you had 11 dogs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there should be 11 boxes here. If you have seven puppies, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So there's your seven puppies, mm -hmm. then four of them, are adults, right? Those are the adults. These are the adults. And there's four adults and there's seven puppies, right? Mm -hmm. But you could just be looking at the total number of dogs, right? The dogs just in general, and there's 11 of them. Right. Does that make a little more sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now what they're saying is, hey, on this given week, we have 55 dogs in the shelter. How many, of, how many of them are puppies? So to answer the first question, how many puppies in the shelter this week, what I could do is I could use this ratio right here uh -huh. and I could say, all right, what did I have? I have 55 dogs total. So I, I wanna know how many puppies there are. So X puppies over 55 dogs oh, is God. equal to seven puppies over 11 dogs. And then I could do my little cross thing like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, so it's gonna be the same process for the adult dogs to find yeah, out. Yeah, so then for okay. the adult dogs, you're gonna use this ratio instead. Okay. Yeah? Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, a lot of students have trouble with that problem first time they see it. Okay. Good, good. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. David, did you find one that you wanted to go over? No, actually, that was the one uh, that, that is I had it? questions okay. on. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. You got anything else? Any, anyone want me to talk about anything? Sachi, I know you had several questions. I don't know if you've figured them out already or if you want me to go over them. Yes, uh, actually, that's a question for the today's homework. Uh, okay. I walked ahead. It's page okay. 29. Okay. And then it's uh, conversion A. 29. 29. And then which one? And it's 
uh, number two and a number four. Um, part A. Mm -hmm. And question asking to the answer to three digit. Um, mm -hmm. So I answer as 4.79 times, stuff like that, but the answer came out a little bit different, so. Okay, so, so how, are you, how are you doing that problem on number two? So I use a calculator to okay. uh, get the number first. Okay. And then after I calculated, it came out the negative 0 0.00478875. Uh -huh. And then from there, I'm gonna uh, fix that to the scientific notation. So let me ask you mm -hmm. something. Um, mm -hmm. When you do this, could you have done um, this number right here, and you just move the decimal point six places to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you wind up getting point zero, 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 one, two, five. That's what that number is. Uh -huh. And then minus, and then this one, because it's a negative three, you move it three places to the left. One, two, three, so you get point zero, zero, four, seven, nine. Is that the way you did it? No, that's not a what. It's okay, complete. that is a way you can do it, and I think it might be easier to do it that way. Okay. Point, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, five, minus point zero, zero, four, seven, nine. And when I do that, I get a negative point zero, zero, four, seven, man, I can't find my glasses, eight, eight, seven, seven five. Brianna, I know we're going to do our thing. If you can hang tight for a moment. Okay. Um, so that's the answer I'm getting. And then what I would do is I'd move the decimal point one, two, three. So I would write that as negative 4.78. They want you to round three decimal places. So mm. seven, eight, nine, something like that, times 10 to the, I moved it three places. So negative three, something like that. That's the way I would write it. Oh, oh, they're asking to remove the three decimals. What's that? Uh, so I answer as negative 4.79 times 10 to the negative three. Is it, um, mm -hmm. it? So what did they want? What did the answer key say? Um, the answer key says this one, negative 4.789 times 10 okay. to the negative three, but the question asking to three digits. Yeah, three. Okay. So you actually have to go when you're looking at this, uh -huh. because your decimal is going to wind up right there between the four and the seven. Uh -huh. You have to look out to the seven, to the eight, and then to the eight. And then what that means you look at this seven and you use uh -huh. that to round that eight up to a nine. Oh, okay. I got it. So that's okay. I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all give me a moment. Got to do something real quick. Okay, I think I, I think I invited you into a breakout room, Brianna. Am I saying that, Brianna? Yeah. Okay, if y'all don't mind hanging tight, if you've still got questions, just hang tight for a second. I gotta take care of something. Okay.
Okay, I'm back. More questions. I think I'm good. I think I'm You're okay? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, if that's it, I'm going to end uh, the session here and uh, y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thank See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Okay. Take care.